Everything we do, we call it like three M's, making meetings matter. If they don't matter, don't do them. If people are bored out of their board, stop it. What we're offering you is a whole toolbox, toolkit, tool belt of strategies that you can use starting tomorrow. And my challenge to all of you, and I'm fascinated by this, is what would prevent you from doing this? This stuff that we're giving you has nothing to do with budget. It has to do with changing your way of thinking and basically having the guts to do something different. 37% of us learn by experiencing stuff, moving around, touching, doing things. I fit into this one. Like, I, I have to go somewhere and experience it, and then I read about it. This is not good or bad. This is a learning mode, okay? 34% of us learn most by listening, talking, music, sound, auditory stuff. I have the mouth and the ears for those people, okay? And 29% of us learn most by seeing, reading, pictures. Therefore, my challenge to you is, in your teams, in your work, are you using all those three things all the time? So we want to encourage you to use all of your learning capacities, whatever they are. It also, fact is, this is real time because we're in a room. And some of us are kinesthetic. That means we like to move around and, and we, we got to be physically busy. And if you're organizing stuff, uh, if everybody's physically busy bouncing around, it's pretty hard for anybody else to pay attention. So we want to engineer, and this is a tool, you want to do stuff like this to, so people can listen faster. So we've got squeegee things. We've got, you know, stress balls. You, and you can make them out of sand and balloons and many other things. But if you're one of the people like me who can't sit still uh, without fidgeting, then you need something to fidget constructively with so you can listen faster. And people destroy these things, like <laughs> this one, That's which it. is... Dr. Harry this, ball. Yeah, Dr. Harry decorded. I don't know how you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> like this, so he could listen. But that, and that meant that he could listen. So this is do what it takes. And as an organizer, you have to do, do the things that allow people to be present and fully participate. Excuse me, I see so. somebody doing something very inappropriate behavior at this workshop. There's a woman knitting. That's an alternative stress ball technique that I think is great. <laughs> I'm sorry. My size is. <laughs> I'm sorry, Helen. That's not allowed. You have to leave the room. But you see, what I'm doing is we do that to people. Think about it. We actually punish people for doing what makes them learn. Because somebody has a value system that says, at a meeting, it's inappropriate you know, to do that. Or it's inappropriate for kids to play with things. Or Setting a tone is so powerful that people turn off in two minutes if you don't set the right tone. So do some reflection just in your own heads for a minute about when I have my team meetings, what does it look like? What does it feel like? What do I do well? What could I do better? What am I going to do differently? Okay? But it's a very scary piece because the minute somebody walks in your house, they know a lot about you before you even open your mouth. What does my office look like? What do I look like? What do I wear? Do I look exhausted? You know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We know lots of people who have the beautiful visions, beautiful missions, beautiful belief statements, and then bore their team out of their board. And they get nothing done. And all they do is talk. And, and everybody's mad at each other. And so what this is about, this section is boundaries are really about your culture.
It's the culture. What's the organizational culture? One of the human service organizations, and many of them, is we're always late, we always run over time, we never get what we're supposed to get done. That's our culture. Okay? We're saying, change it. One of my things is I just won't go. If a meeting is bad, like the one we went to, we just walked out. Now, that's one way of people telling you with their feet, you know, that they think this is not going anywhere. But most people don't have 79 hours to sit at meetings. The research says if we're going to have great teams, we need clear rules and boundaries. We need to know what our rules are. We need to be explicit about them. They need to be clear, understood, and unfortunately, there's a corollary to this one. It's actually a double whammy. You've got to enforce your own rules, whatever they are. Because lots of us are pretty good at sitting down and saying, well, we'll negotiate our roles, and we negotiate a really nice package of guidelines for our team, and that everybody says yes. And then we come to the first meeting, and somebody goes out behind the bar and stabs somebody in the back, and nobody says anything. The point is, at that point, there ain't no roles. Now, we went through an exercise, but we didn't mean it. If we're going to... If we're going to have boundaries, we have to agree on what they are. That's not necessarily easy. And then we also, in the same negotiation, have to agree, how are we going to enforce our own rules? And mean it. And you can do gimmick stuff. You can have lots of ways to do it. It doesn't all have to be, like, you know, it doesn't all have to be nasty. I mean, we, uh, somebody told us about using, um, a, a damp dishcloth or something and having that in the middle of the table because <laughs> one of the things in their meetings that tended to happen a lot was people kept no somebody had a great new idea and it's a green hat idea. It was just it was just an idea and somebody said, Oh that's silly and they they put it down. They just so they were wet blanketing everybody and everything. So they put a little damp cloth on the table and every time people slipped into wet blanketing the idea, all you did was just throw them the the wet blanket, and that tended to be sort of an easy way of saying it was an idea. We can note the idea. We don't have to blow it out of the water. We can just let it be, and it allowed them to be extremely creative without being defensive. So you can negotiate your like own. That. Some people really like that. That's you can scary. figure out your own boundaries and your own enforcement guidelines, whatever they are. Just because I'm chairing a meeting doesn't mean that I have to be the enforcer. We can, we can share all kinds of things. We can do lots of ways of making our own rules work. And you have to figure out what will work for you. Now, one of the jobs of me and, and our team is I'm the timekeeper. We're going to stop. We said we'd stop at a quarter to. We are right on target. We will come back together at 11 o'clock sharp. We will start at 11 o'clock. Whoever's here is going to be here. And we're going to do a very exciting session on the framework for setting boundaries. Have a good coffee. <laughs>